Jennifer and her husband are two teachers in San Bernardino, California. They both make about $50,000 and they're wondering, can they afford a house with their current situation? Today we're gonna to be reviewing their budget, their savings, and their local market and give them that answer. So we're gonna be using this system to really determine how strong their foundation is. I like to remind you guys that right now with the market being absolutely crazy, the conversation is no longer about how much money do I need for a down payment? What loan program should I use? You know, all these like little mini tips that used to be useful. Now it's about how strong is your foundation? Should you even consider buying a house right now if X, right? So that's why we're focusing on this. So let's start off with everybody's favorite savings. So for the savings, I have an interesting situation. Uh, this is the first time we do something like this, so I, I don't blame her for it. But all I was given was $80,000 as a general savings that they have. Now, what we're gonna do, and what I want you guys to do in the future if you're gonna send your inquiry in, we have to separate it, right? We can't just have 80,000 in the bank and say, hey, I have this for a house. You're gonna go talk to somebody and they're gonna be like, great, let's use that whole $80,000. Next thing you know, you get yourself in a house and you have no money left, right? So first we're gonna have to break this up into emergency fund, which should be the main priority. Retirement funds, not obviously not fully funded, but at least started before then you start saving your housing funds. So to figure out which one is which, we're first gonna to need to figure out what your funds look like, like how's your survival numbers, how's your budget look like. So we'll be right back to this category. So for your budget, I'm really, I'm really proud of you. I'm like, I'm everybody's dad out here, like giving you the love you need as a child. Uh, you have a very solid situation. This is the numbers that you sent me. Um, according to you, you live a very frugal life. You, you live by the code of the budget, which good for you. And you don't overspend in things you needed. And I can see it like just based off your numbers and your percentages, everything looks pretty clean. This is your budget broken down. And as you can see, your essentials are a little bit on the high side at 45.6% right now, but your debts, your non-essentials are very well managed. And this leaves your leftover savings to be about 40% at 2,800. And it's no wonder you were able to save so much and you're gonna continue to save up. But one thing I want you to understand that most people should understand watching this too, is once you buy a home, you're not gonna be able to save at a high rate. You can hopefully still save, but the idea of renting is you're gonna be renting something now over luxury. So you're gonna be renting something pretty cheap, which it looks like you currently are. Um, so you can just massively save funds so you can get back on track. And that's really what you did. You did mention that you've used this time the last decade to pay off your credit card, to pay off your cars, and, and you're just working on the student loan as your last debt. This has been amazing. You've been preparing yourself perfectly, and I wanna make sure to give you kudos for that. So this is what your current budget looks like, just completely broken down. As you can see here, you have a little bit under 50% just for savings, which is awesome, but everything else seems pretty managed. Obviously that big chunk there uh, of $1,600 being for rent. But now let's see how that budget looks like with the potential monthly payment. We're not gonna base it off what you qualify for, we're gonna base it off what you can afford. Because if we look at what you can qualify for, it's gonna look great. They're gonna look at based off your gross monthly income. Uh, they're gonna, if they use 50%, but you're probably gonna use like you know, 45, 43%. But anyways, let's say they use 50%. Uh, they're gonna qualify you up to, up to $4,000, which is really great. It's gonna put you in a good position for a good house and whatnot. But first of all, let's go back. Let's take off the rent. After removing the rent, let's go ahead and add that $4,000. And that's gonna completely put you in a bad spot. That's gonna put you over 50% of your money go into that mortgage. And you're like Pac-Man, Pac-Man's eating all your money. The only thing you have left over to live off and everything is pretty planned pretty well. But I have a feeling you're leaving some things out, which is okay. I mean, I, I get it. But anyways, it leaves you with 500 bucks to pay, to continue saving, to build your retirement, to you know really aggressively do what you need to do with your life. So that's not gonna be the, the route you wanna go, even though they'll qualify you for that. Let's say there's some good lenders out there, I'll be like, I'm not gonna qualify for your full amount. Let's do 3,500. That's still 50% of your take home income. So remember, lenders will use your gross income to qualify you and not use your net income. So to use your net income, we wanna be around this range, which is either 25% of your net, 30% of your net, or 33% of your net. So this will be about 25% of your net, this will be about 30% of your net, and this will be about 33% of your net. Yes, technically these might work over here, 2,600, it will be 30, 28% of your gross, and this will be 30% of your gross. I have to add it because if you Google it, there are a lot of ideas out there that, hey, 28% of your gross income should be around where you need to afford. I personally think you should live all your life off your net, not your gross. So we're gonna range it between 1,800 to 2,300 where you should be. 
if let's say we're in the middle and we're at 20, which is 30% of your net income, and we make a monthly payment be about 2100, then that's more manageable. Your mortgage payment does eat up 30% of all your take home income, but that's still, you still have about 35% left over if you have your current expenses. This is $2,400 left over to save, to build, tackle your debt, to build your retirement, or just for unexpected funds. This is still very solid. So, so if we go back to the magic iPad, so this is how your current situation is. You're able to save 40% of your savings. It was a pretty solid situation with a mortgage payment of about $2,100. Your needs, including this mortgage payment, are about 52%. You're still paying off your student loan, and that's still about 5.7, or we'll call it 6%. And your wants, or basically what you just consider your meals out and your $90 worth of subscription, are still about 8.4%, which is 8. This leaves you about 33 to 34% to continue saving this puts you in a good spot. So now that we have this information, this is how the budget looks like. So I can rank you now for your budget. I'm not here to judge you on if your budget works for your area. I'm here to build your strengths. This is stuff you can work on folks while the market takes a dump. So I'm judging her based off her personal budget, knowing what I know. You're doing an excellent job, continuing to pay off your debts. You can potentially, if you buy a mortgage under 2200, still be put in a great position where you can continue to save at a high rate. And of course, you know, thank you for your service, both you and your husband teaching. You are a good, a pretty good spot. So I'm going to put you like at a solid eight around there. Put the home go homey there. Um, you're in a very good spot there. Uh, whether it works with that specific market or not, we'll, we'll find out right now. But you're doing a great job. And I think you can really build a nice giant cushion and really start building a legacy for, you know, down the road. If you ever grow a family or if it's just you two, that's fine. You can really make some great change in your environment, in your neighborhood, regardless of what's going on with housing. I commend you and you're on your path and you're definitely an inspiration for a lot of us. So now that we know that, let's see what the savings situation looks like. All right. So we're going to build your emergency fund based off your future numbers, not your current numbers. So According to just the rough numbers, I, you're approximately like what, $4,000 of your emergency funds needed to survive, including your new mortgage of $2,100. Um, so we'll, we'll say about $4,000. So just for starters, we need to build that up. Like maybe let's say three months as a minimum, but really the goal being about six months, okay? So obviously from here, we just do a little math, right? So 4,000 times three would be 12K. We get six months, so six times 4,000 would be 24K. So because you have the funds, I would just probably make this 25K. Puts us in a better spot. And man, just have that in a separate fund. Have it in a separate bank account. Build a credit, local credit union, something, something you don't touch, and it's just there. So that is the cash funds that are available if needed. Um, if you want to you know, get a little technical or savvy. You can have three months be available through cash. Three months can be a little more harder to obtain with some kind of fund or something. I don't know. You can, I'll leave that up to you. But, you know, I think with the current situation, we can knock out 25,000 of that, which leaves us about, was that 55,000? Now I'm assuming you being a teacher, you probably already have something started here. You probably are already paying your retirement fund or you've, you've built some kind of situation up there. So, Yes, you could go, you know, make a separate account or, you know, have a different 401ks or whatever. But for now, we're just going to leave this be and we're going to essentially leave the additional 55,000 to then be your housing fund. So that's how much we have to uh, play around with. So you've done a great job saving. I personally would look into maybe not just doing your teacher retirement funds, some other kind of retirement funds. Um, I am not a financial advisor, but I'm sure there's something you can do there. Just, uh, you know, housing doesn't have to be your only investment. It's been the easiest investment to obtain over the last decade. That is now changing. It is a lot more volatile. It's going to be a lot more difficult to make some significant gains on it. It's definitely going to be more long term. So, you know, maybe explore different options. Um, so 55000 for the housing fund. I think we can break a little piece of that to just have as extra funds for like house repairs or anything like that. So we can maybe knock another $10,000 on the side for extra funds and whatnot. So we can say 10K for extra funds for like any potential repairs that because you're probably going to buy a house that needs work. So we're about $45,000 of housing funds. So overall, once again, I'm judging you based on your personal situation, not how it relates to your environment. Uh, you've done a great job saving uh, as well. Obviously, your your budget really reflects that. So I'm going to put you about eight and a half and nine there. Um, you have a great situation. Now, I, the fact that you sent me the amount as a total amount tells me you don't have it broken up, but I'm not going to fault you for that because there's a good amount there. Um, just really make sure that separated and you, yes, maybe you did have it separated. You didn't mention it uh, or maybe you have a mental note of what's separated, but 
I mean, with that much money, I wouldn't mess with it. I would just have it in different accounts. Um, but it looks like overall you have good uh, budget, good savings situations. So now let's look at the market to see what's going on in San Bernardino. So your current needs are you're looking for about $450,000. Um, you're looking in, of course, San Bernardino. You need three bedrooms, two baths. Now, I wonder why you said four fifty. I wonder if you've talked to a lender and that's what they gave you. Maybe I'm hoping that's not the case. But um, let's see what's going on uh, according to Zillow here on San, San Bernardino. Am I, am I bugging you guys with how I'm saying it? It's, I always appreciate when there's an effort made. Like I have a daughter named Mercedes and there's always this crosswalk guard who's not Hispanic. But, you know, when she sees her, she says, hi, Mercedes. I'm like, ooh, got a little Spanish in you. Anyways, I appreciate the effort. Just always, you know, some people decide to go. They look at me. They go, what's up, Javier? I was like, I didn't choose my name, man. <laughs> you can at least try to say it right. Um, but anyways, let's look what well, here's what's under 450 three bedrooms one and a half bath uh, Looks like there's 21 results. Uh, not bad um, I want to get a good idea of what's going on with the prices here now here. I'm going to suggest um, Get good data from an agent now. It's gonna be hard to find an agent That's not gonna be salesy or anything like that So if you need a few recommendations, you can use my referral service links in the description or maybe just look in social media, just get a good idea. The goal is to find someone that's willing to wait with you six months to a year to kind of write things out. Right now, agents seem to be building their value, not based off of how fast they can sell your house, but how long they can endure the market with you, right? So when you do find someone just like, hey, I'm looking to buy next year or two, can you run some numbers for me? Can you give me the last uh, pending numbers? Um, can you give me the last solds for the last three, six months? Can you get the solds in the last three months for monthly solds? Can you get the monthly pendings, the monthly actives in this specific city? And just get all this data, right? If you can't find it on your own. But anyways, so we see here there's 21 houses for sale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get this a city and I'm uh, going to plug it into, I think Redfin has a decent site. Let me check. So yeah, I, I plugged in uh, market stats, San Bernardino, California. Um, the thing about the people always love using Redfin as for articles and YouTube videos. I don't trust websites that are trying to sell houses at the same time to show you the progress. So then again, if you talk to a realtor, they're trying to sell your house. It sucks. Let's just agree. There needs to be more... Uh, consumer friendly education uh, data out there not not it's always weird that the data that's available has is behind someone who's trying to sell you a house you know what i'm saying but anyways um looking at the numbers home sold over uh definitely lower according to last year so the less houses selling it looks like the median days on the market is trending upward and it does look like the median sales price is holding i don't know um let's see uh let me see if i can find any other data Rocket homes. Let's see what they do. What they think. More of a seller's market than a buyer's market. Looks like the price is dropping. Prices are increasing still over the last five years. Let's look at single families. I mean, according to these websites, it looks like it's trending upward. I guess. Um, although there's a foreclosure there. <laughs> but anyways, so it looks like what you're looking for is doable. Okay, let's see what's under pending and contract. So there's only uh 41 houses that are pending. Wow. So there's 41 houses that are pending and under contract and I cannot see the solds. So I'd be curious to see what's going on there. But anyways, yeah, so it looks like there's more pending in houses that are selling than there are active, active listings. So this tells us there is more of a demand in this area. So I guess it seems like it's a little more aggressive than usual. Um, so the reason why I'm kind of researching this and please, I'm just doing a half ass research. I want you to actually pull up actual data with someone you trust is I want to see if it's actual viable market to buy in. Is it going upward? Is it going downward? It looks like this specific city seems to be continuing to go upward right now from what I'm just seeing, but I will not make that conclusion for sure until I actually see data by the MLS, by that information. So it looks like it is doable. I wouldn't go all the way to 450 though. It looks like there's some better options. I'm gonna see if I can find anything that's been longer in the market. This has been 30 days on the Zillow, but it's 449. Um, this one just had a massive price cut, 14,000. So it looks like they're being more reasonable with what's going on. A little on the older side, I'm not too familiar with the zip code, so please apologize on that. But it looks okay, looks viable, looks decent. Let's see what that monthly payment will look like on our own without using a Zestimate. So according to this, uh, property taxes are, uh, they're not 362. Thing about California is I know you guys base your taxes off the sale of the house. So I'm not very wise or good with property taxes when it comes to Cali. So I'm just gonna leave this high number here. Um, uh, and then so let's assume we're gonna put, well, you can put 20% down. So 
Oh, that's actually 83,000, so you wouldn't have enough. See, this is why it's good to break up your funds first, because if you would have talked to somebody, they would have been like, yeah, I just put 20% down. And you're like, okay. So you're probably closer to 10%. Uh, 10% down seems to be better. Um, yeah, rates super high. It sucks, but it is what it is. Mortgage insurance, I don't think it'll be that high. It'll probably be, say, like $70, $50 less than this. Taxes, I'm estimating high, but it could be lower. So let's say give or take about $3,200 to $3,400. So it doesn't seem like it's doable with what our work. Now, it looks like you'll qualify for it. Don't get me wrong. You'll qualify for it, but it doesn't look like you can afford it. And this is the situation that a lot of people find themselves in. So this doesn't work. We need to be probably $100,000 less. Then we're closer. We're not exactly where we want to, but we're closer to where it should be. Or we go back to 415 or whatever it was. If we increase it to 20% down, it doesn't help that much more. So uh, let's say we stay at 10% or we wait rates to drop to like, I don't know, 5% or something. It's still, uh, it's still, it's still kind of high. So there needs to be a few factors and rates need to drop. If you continue saving your down payment, then you're about where you need to. Or it just doesn't seem like it works. We probably have to buy something like in the 350 range. And then also combining with like, let's say the rates go down to 6% and maybe you can save the 20%. Then it looks like it works. Although I can't safely quite uh, make an assumption of the neighborhood or the area until I see like actual MLS data. It looks like the market's keeping value for now. It seems like there's more people buying than selling there, but you are overpriced. It doesn't seem to work in that specific area. You probably need to go search outward into different areas and get something that's going to be $100,000 cheaper or continue to wait. Hopefully prices will drop. Hopefully the interest rate will drop um, and all these combined factors will get you to the point where you're going to be at about $2,000 around there. So um, you're in a very similar situation, Jen and husband, that as a lot of people are. So let's put our home goal homies back up there. Um, you're in a solid position for your savings. You're in a solid position for for that. But the market itself is not helping you at all. So you're like around a two or three for the market. And it's not nothing you're doing. It's not nothing that you can contribute to. You know, it's not like a lender can say, oh, we just buy 20% or 30% 40%. No, it's a combination of rates being high and prices being high that unfortunately are not making it work. Now, if you are able to buy, it seems like the data is showing that houses are staying like pretty strong there. I would of course double check this information than just some guy that's looked at Zillow and Redfin and Realtor for stats. So if the market, if you talk to an agent and lender and the market's still strong, then yeah, it's like, okay, it's like, it's seeming to, to stay strong and I'd bump it up a little stronger, but still it doesn't stop from the fact that as great as the situation for you that you're in, the market is not doing you any favors. So um, unfortunately I'm going to have to tell you for now, you're in a situation that you need to consider moving to a different area or you're in the waiting game. You are waiting for something massive to change in the market near you. And that could take years, that could take months, that could take decades, who knows how long that would take. So if you wanna to continue to live, love where you live, you, you, you wanna to continue to be in your neighborhood, then you're gonna be a renter, or you're gonna to have to wait for an opportunity, either the market shift, uh, prices drop, interest rates drop, or there's a friend or family member, someone that you know that's like willing to sell you really cheap in the 300s. Um, so that's the only the only thing that really works for you. So so that's it, what do you guys think? I appreciate you if you give me your feedback and let me know what, what, they, what Jen and her husband should do and in general, what do you want to see more from these type of videos? Now, remember, if you're looking to get your budget started and get it started right, use youneedabudget.com. My link's in the description below. You get a free 30-day trial. And of course, if you're looking for an agent anywhere in the country, use the link in the description below as well. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next, so go check it out. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.